Mike Marine in a little while to see Wichita State take on Northern Iowa. Here's how Northern Iowa has fared on the road. Brought to you by Travelocity. Already nine road wins this year. That ties a school record. Ties a school record. Getting number 10 is going to be rather problematic because very few people come into the roundhouse and stroll out with a victory. 31 in a row that Wichita State has won inside this building. Greg Marshall, head coach of the Shockers, joins us now. And Greg, you guys have had terrific success here and elsewhere, for that matter, for the last few years. What does it do for you to have a high-profile game within your conference at this stage in the season, number 10 against number 11? Well, first of all, it brings you guys here. I, yeah. I think uh, having the 10th-ranked team in the country come and play at the 11th-ranked team makes this a nationally relevant game, not just for the conference championship, but for seeding in the NCAA tournament. And it brings a lot of excitement to the community, the campus, as you can tell. I mean, this is a big, big environment for us. It'll be a big environment anyway, but for all the reasons, senior day, it's a big game. You looking at me? Yeah. yeah. You want to jump in? <laughs> if you'd like to jump in. I, I, if not, I, I, can, hey, look, I can go on forever. You know that. But you Mike Wallace your way through this whole thing. Uh, well, that would be, I, I do, be better television. I do have a question but, way better than anything Freeze could ask. <laughs> your backcourt is so good. Like Fred Van Vliet, Ron Baker, Takeo Cotton. What makes them so good? Like, I, I think I know why, but you, you're with them every day. Well, I think, Jay, it's, it's because they just want to win more than the opposition. And that's a, they lay it on the line in practice, in the weight room, in film study, uh, obviously in games. And they're obviously very talented, too. Let's not take that away from them. You've got Fred Van Vliet, who's the, the best point guard that I've ever coached. He's a guy that runs the team. He orchestrates the offense. He is a coach on the floor, not an assistant coach, a head coach. I mean, I sit there and marvel at the things that he is able to do, way, the way he communicates and leads. Ron Baker is a great athlete, not just a shooter. He's a good defensive player. He can score it. Uh, and then Tekel Cotton is the best athlete, inch for inch, pound for pound, for pound in our league. A dynamite defender, but also can slash to the goal and get some offensive rebounds. Coach, is this year's team better than last year's team? Now, I'm not saying we equate that by, you know, how deep you go in the tournament, just overall the team together. I'm not going to say that because, Jay, I think last year we were at this point 29-0. So we're 26 and three. Uh, we've had three hiccups, and one of them was to Northern Iowa at their place. Mm -hmm. And I think when you lose a Clee Anthony early to the NBA and lo lose other grown men like Kadeem Colby and C.J. LaFeel and Nick Wiggins that are all playing professionally now, uh, it's hard for us to do. We don't do the one and dones. We can't replace them. So we have a bunch of freshmen. We have six freshmen and two junior college players, eight first-year players at Wichita State. How do you contain Seth Tuttle? He went off that first game, not only as a scorer, but as a facilitator. What can you do to slow him down and take him out? Well, you've got to give him different looks. Uh, we'll change up our ball screen defense today. We'll have different guys guard him. Hopefully stay out of foul trouble. That's what he did the last time. He got both of our starting post player, our, our starter and our backup, Darius Carter and Shaquille Morris, in foul trouble. So we then were, we had a third string center, a freshman, Ron O'Nerger, trying to guard him, and it was a mismatch. So we'll do some things. We may have to switch up defenses, uh, show him an occasional zone. But you don't, you don't shut him down. He's a really talented player. He's a five-tool player. He can score in, in every way. He can shoot the three. He can make free throws. He can bounce it. He can pass it. I mean, he's really talented. We, we spent a lot of time this morning talking about Kevin Stallings' incident at Vanderbilt. During your coaching career, how, has, how have things changed in the way you have to interact with players, whether it's correcting them, calling them out, and particularly how you might interact with them in front of everybody in the, in the arena? Well, I'll start by saying uh, with Coach Stallings, he, he overreacted to the situation. He knows that. We all do it from time to time. But we don't know the background of that situation. We don't know the relationship that Coach Stallings has with the young man. And I'm telling you, no one twisted that kid's arm to make him come out with a statement immediately following the incident saying that's the best coach in America. I love my coach. I think I think it was a little petty to, to begin with for the Tennessee assistant coach to bring that to light. Uh, it didn't look like too much was going on, but there's history. Obviously, Baldwin had done that before. He said some inflammatory things prior to the game, I guess. So I really, you know, I've been busy with Northern Iowa, sure. but, but, but I, I don't know too much about it. But I know that what the coach said was not meant 
literally. literally. Just, but just in, in terms of big picture, have things changed with the way you can deal with players now? as opposed to maybe when you first started your career? Uh, Hal Nunnally at Randolph-Macon, my college coach, I mean, he, he had some choice words from time to time. <laughs> we'd, have, we'd, have, we'd have to go to the dictionary to look them up. But, Are they in uh, the dictionary? Yeah, or the, 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 the Urban star, Dictionary. Yeah. Urban Dictionary. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, he was tremendous with his, you know, a wordsmith. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we would have to go look up his words that he would call us. But he, he, was, he was good. And, and Coach Cress at the College of Charleston is similar. I mean, you you learn from those guys and and but we've all said things that we regret in the heat of the moment but you have to have a relationship that's the number one thing these guys have to know what you really mean and not how you said it you know i think about it and anytime i look at a head coach I've, I'm assuming that if you're a coach, you know what you're doing in terms of the, uh, coaching the game of basketball. But to me, what separates some of the good from the great ones are being leaders of men. Right. In today's game, considering the environment that we live in, what does it take to be a leader of men in this day and age, in your estimation? I think you, first of all, have to have moral authority. And that's what Hal Nunnally used to talk about. He was a maker of men. And that's what I've tried to be. Uh, w these kids come from different backgrounds. Some of them don't have table manners or great etiquette. We try to teach them how to shake a hand and, and meet someone and, and, and interact with a, a grown person and that could possibly w you could work with one day or work for. Um, you just have to show them by example. You have to lead by example and you have to tell them when they step out of line the truth. And, and you have to do it sometimes uh, it, very pointedly. And you can only tell them the truth if they trust you. Exactly. And, and, and I think the biggest thing, Greg, ask. You play for Coach Nunley, you work for Coach Kress, all right? Today, is trust earned as opposed to coming with a title? Oh, I, I think you definitely have to earn it, yeah, without a doubt. It, do, it does not come with a title, maybe how it did when we were coming up. You have to earn respect, and that's why we have the players over to the house all the time. We cook for them. We, we don't have a football team, so when we recruit in the, in the fall, the, the nine televisions in my home were all have a different game on and the, the recruits and their parents come over to the house with the entire team and we just spend a Saturday afternoon in Casa Marshall. Well, Greg, let me ask a question. How do you, how do you break down that entitlement? Right, because a lot of these kids now, they come in school entitled about, I'm going to play this amount of time or I'm going to go and achieve this. How, how do you kind of break people down to get everybody on the same page as one unit? Well, that, that's a good question. What we try to do is, and Greg Popovich said it best last year with the Spurs, we want guys in our organization that are already over themselves. And that's what he's got. And that's what we try to recruit. We recruit young, young people that want to be bigger than themselves, part of something that's special, and help make it even more special. I'm glad the players weren't entitled when, when Joe. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he, he didn't want to start. He, he wasn't interested in stats or anything. Co cover of Sports Illustrated <laughs> pretty early in the career. How many points did you yeah. score in your career? He was over himself. I'm, he, I'm still <laughs> waiting. I'm still <laughs> waiting on my team. about Wichita State right now. Hey, I'm, still, I'm still waiting on my team to get over itself. You got any? You got any tips? Yeah, yeah. Keep <laughs> waiting. Hey, good luck this afternoon. Hey, thanks. Greg Marshall, head coach of Wichita State, pleased to have him with us on the early edition of College Game Day, working our way toward the 11 a.m. edition on ESPN, and soon you'll hear another thing that's ticking us off. <laughs>